we we should all know we all know that Gracia is a long long standing project. Uh, Backlash will give a uh, an update on the project. He's a research software engineer, open source developer, and open source advocate. He received his master's in geoinformatics from the Czech Technical University and a PhD in geospatial analytics from North Carolina State University. Backlab is a member of the GRASS GIS development team as well as the project steering committee. So uh, with that, um, over to you, Backlab. I'm sure if you want to scare your screen, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thank you, Dom. So I will talk about the state of Grass GIS, and I'm uh, really excited to uh, talk to you about it uh, today because I think we are uh, at the dawn of a new era in Grass GIS project. As Dom said, uh, my name is Václav Petráš. Sometimes I go by Vašek, and I work at North Carolina State University, United States. But uh, this talk uh, or what I will present is really done by the whole community. So I would like to both acknowledge that and tell you a little bit about the grass community. Uh, in the community, we uh, sometimes don't really have distinctions between users and developers. And in that, in that sense, it's very open. And uh, as you understand when, when you are part of the OSG or Phosphorus community, uh, we uh, include all people who are uh, writing code, but also people who are doing documentation or translations. Uh, recently, uh, in February 2021, we have new elections for the project steering committee, and we have a new chair, uh, Veronica Andreo. And the place to meet the community is, uh, uh, of course, online. Uh, we have a traditional user mailing list with archives since uh, 1991, which is quite a unique uh, thing. Uh, we see increasing uh, usage of GS Stack Exchange and GitHub discussions uh, is uh, a new thing we just enabled. Uh, and uh, of course, that doesn't, uh, that's not enough for everybody. So we uh, also have a a community of companies who are providing uh, commercial support that includes uh, my employer, NC State University. If you don't see your name here on this list and you think you should be listed here, uh, tell me uh, privately or write to uh, Grass a dev mailing list and we will uh, fix that. If you are not familiar with Grass GS, uh, let me tell you that uh, obviously it's uh, free and open source which uh, means that you can use it, modify it, uh, share it any way you want, as long as you comply with the uh, GNU GPL license. Uh, GrassGS is split into tools or modules. Uh, we have uh, over 500 of these modules in the core version of GrassGS, which you install, and then additional uh, 300 plus uh, add-ons, which you can install and extend your uh, local installation of Grass by that. GrassGS has uh, different interfaces, which suit different people or different workflows. Uh, there is a graphical user interface, command line interface, Python and API, and there is also C API and libraries for uh, creating uh, uh, really fast processing tools. Uh, a lot of people are using GrassGS through other interfaces, uh, like the R package or uh, QGIS processing uh, plugin or the GrassGS plugin in QGIS. GrassGS tries to cover a uh, lot of different uh, uh, data types, including vectors, rasters, but also uh, less common 3D rasters and space time data sets. The algorithms itself in GrassGS are uh, based on often on scientific papers or there are uh, scientific papers associated with the uh, with the tool itself and the tool is or the algorithm is very unique and these references are included in the documentation we can also see 
uh, usage of GraphGS in scientific liter literature. That's a continuing trend. And now we are also experimenting with a, a Google Scholar profile for GraphGS as a project. And we have a DOI for GraphGS. So there is a, a DOI for GraphGS as a project and uh, for every release. So that uh, facilitates uh, software citations, which is uh, a quite a new thing in academic community. One of the big uh, design uh, drivers in GraphGS is uh, innovating with stability, uh, which means that, of course, every time when we have some improvements, that brings uh, changes. But we are trying to introduce breaking changes only when needed. Uh, for example, when we have graphical user interface and that, that changes as needed and often. And for Python API, we added that in version six and uh, uh, that uh, over time it took over the leading position from Bash as main scripting interface. It matured over the course of uh, version seven and now we are planning some additions for version eight too. However, the basic things Continue to work, continue work in the same way. Uh, for example, a raster algebra from which you would use in GraphGS version five in two thousand two, uh, the exp the expression would just work fine uh, in version eight, which uh, we are about to release. Uh, except for like the uh, white space around uh, equals operator, which I think is pretty good. Uh, and the other uh, design um, direction I mentioned already is that the grass is trying to cover a lot of different things. So in the software, when you install it, uh, all the matured tools are already available or available uh, there without additional installation, but you can install additional ones from grass at on repository if you, if you need that. As for what we are planning for GraphGS 8, which uh, many people are now expecting. Uh, we plan to release it this fall. This is uh, a revised timeline, which is not a surprise, uh, but uh, we are uh, hoping to, to do it now, finally. And then in the spring, uh, we hope to release version 8.2, which should include uh, quite exciting results from the uh, Google Summer of Code uh, 2021, which I will mention later on. So what is the, the new era I, uh, I'm so excited about? Well, we completely changed the first time user experience in GraphGS. Uh, the initial project, which in GraphGS is called location, is set up automatically and the user is given suggestions on what to do next. This really means there is no more startup screen. If you use Grass, you know there was a startup screen. There is no more startup screen. And we plan to go even farther in version 8.2. We are now doing refactoring of the code and uh, some preview of a single window interface. And this will be opt-in in version 8.2. If you want to know more about all this, uh, there is a talk by Linda, uh, which is called I hated the way grass started, so I changed it. So I think this will be a fun talk and you should attend it. But uh, there are there is even more. Uh, we have now a centralized uh, data management tab in a graphical user interface. You can do all these things from command line or from Python, but uh, now there is a really nice way to do it in a graphical user interface. It was possible, but just not. Not that great. Uh, GraphGS now supports dark team. If your operating system uh, has a dark team, and uh, uh, this is already some old news, but we uh, migrated to GitHub, which meant also migration to Git. We are using PRs for uh, code and issues on GitHub, and we are also leveraging uh, GitHub actions quite a bit. This uh, relates to the fact that now the code is uh, checked against Flake 8. We also reformatted our Python code using Black just to make it simple. It's just formatted by Black and that's it, uh, which is exactly the Black philosophy. 
and we uh, removed most of GCC and CLAND warnings in C code, and we are now checking it for every pull request. And we are running also code QL tests on the pull requests. To improve uh, cloud readiness of GrassGIS, uh, we are providing Docker images. Uh, we are building them automatically from the from the source code uh, using GitHub Actions uh, for release and for the development version from the main branch. There are different flavors, uh, Alpine, Debian, and Ubuntu. And if you think uh, there should be more, uh, please let us know. Ideally on the grass dev, but here is uh, good too. I think we already got some suggestions on this conference. And another uh, uh, cloud item is uh, the Actinia project, which is a REST API, which you can use uh, to uh, do computations in GrassGS in cloud. It's not part of GrassGS, it's a third party project, but it's open source and it's uh, done by our own uh, Marcus Neteller and his team. And there is a dedicated talk about that as well. So check out that. And we worked also on HPC readiness grasses used on HPC hyperperformance computing clusters a lot. Uh, but now we improved uh, and included some of uh, some recipes to actually build it. Um, and we uh, have a better integration uh, with Conda environments and that's hopefully an ongoing trend and it will get even better. I'm not so sure how to think about that or what, 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 I, what I feel about this, but we now have a mascot, uh, Grassy the Hungry Cow. Um, and uh, the cow is uh, always hungry for more. Uh, so we have actually some more improvements coming in 8.0. Uh, we are replacing the Liblas uh, library with PDEL for our uh, LiDAR uh, point import and especially for the binning uh, module, which uh, now can do actually much more than the original original one, not only thanks to PDAL, but also thanks to the additional point filtering uh, and uh, binning methods we included. Uh, we updated our uh, code to support uh, latest proch and GDAL versions, which means that we have all the uh, great and cool features which uh, Proch and GDEL have. And then we also worked on some uh, of the algorithms in GrassGS. For example, uh, vVoronoi, which is the vector module to generate Voronoi polygons. Uh, the module can now uh, create uh, area skeletons and center lines, uh, which is the, uh, the violet lines you can see on the picture. Another uh, big addition for 8.0 uh, is that uh, each raster map will now have a semantic label, which is a metadata item. Uh, and uh, that doesn't have to be unique. And that's kind of the point of it, that each uh, raster uh, can have this label and that can uh, be used in different uh, contexts. And the primary one or the current uh, usage in GrassGS itself is that uh, it is used in image classification to identify individual bands, uh, which then allow us, allows us in the, uh, in the classification workflow to train uh, the algorithm on one, uh, one set of data and then uh, easily uh, port the generated signature files uh, to another scene or easily use it. There is really no, uh, no porting there. Uh, they are portable just by themselves. Uh, if you don't need to use them or don't want to use them, uh, you can use it without it. Uh, so that's again uh, uh, the idea of keeping the things the way they were uh, when it works. And uh, when you are working with GrassGS, uh, 
you you know that uh, you usually import data, but you don't have to always do it. You can also just uh, link them, uh, and that's uh, for raster data that's done with our external module, and uh, that now is improved and it's using more of GDAL features, which allows us to do the imports really fast. And, or the, sorry, the linking really fast. And uh, uh, for some workflows, that means that uh, the linking takes uh, almost no time. And there is uh, even more coming in 8.2. Uh, which should be around uh, really somewhere around uh, spring next year. Uh, we have now uh, several of the core raster modules uh, paralyzed, uh, specifically paralyzed with OpenMP, and that's uh, uh, that's work done uh, by uh, by Aaron, we who worked uh, during Google Summer of Code on this. And uh, yet another Google Summer of Code work done by Caitlin uh, was on integration of CrassGS with Jupyter Notebooks. And you could, of course, use CrassGS before with, uh, with Python and with Jupyter Notebooks. But now we are including a dedicated uh, package or sub-package uh, in CrassGS, which uh, allows you to use it more smoothly, uh, specifically in notebooks, uh, which means uh, easier setup, more intuitive workflow, and also visualization of the data in different ways. Uh, you can do classic GraphQL rendering, you can uh, show data on interactive maps, and you can also uh, look at 3D images. And finally, for 8.2, uh, we are also including, or rather planning to include, a spatial query of projections when you are setting up a new project or a new location, where you will be able to uh, select a coordinate reference system uh, spatially rather than just by uh, text search. And uh, we have uh, much more uh, additions by our broader community, which uh, most of these additions are usually in the GraphQL add-ons repository, and that will be something uh, you would install in addition to the basic graph installation. One is uh, uh, multi-resolution valley bottom uh, flatness index. Another is a tool to create uh, weighted flow accumulation, uh, subwater shed stream networks, and you can learn more about this in a, in a workshop or other workshop material. The workshop already happened at this conference, but in the slide deck, there is a link uh, to, that, uh, to that material. Uh, yet another thing which will be presented on this conference in a talk uh, is a module called R Area Create Weight, uh, which is uh, uh, which is a waiting, uh, waiting tool uh, for areas. And uh, there is much more. Uh, here is a list of some of the, some of the tools which are uh, helping with automated download import, but also analysis of some of the common data sets like Sentinel, Landsat, UHGS data sets, uh, or NetCDF files. And there are two talks which are relevant to that. So you can again get those from the from the slides. And uh, maybe you have noticed at the at the bottom of each slide, I always included uh, people who worked on that specific feature. Here I couldn't fit all the people. I included uh, their their institutions, and uh, that's something I would like to actually uh, highlight uh, more that we have a uh, lot of different institutions working together directly or indirectly on GraphQL. And uh, if you are from such an institution, uh, uh, we would like you to invite 
uh, uh, to contact us and tell us more about how how we can better acknowledge you on the website or uh, in presentations like this. Uh, as for the team uh, I'm working uh, with at the Center for Geospatial Analytics at NC State University, we are working on a uh, urban growth tool, uh, Futures. We are working on a pathogen uh, and pest spread simulation, uh, our pop spread, and also about yet another interface for interacting with geospatial simulations, tangible landscape. And uh, you can get these slides, so you can uh, look at uh, uh, my favorite uh, list of resources. And uh, lastly, I would like to in invite you to uh, get involved more with uh, GrassGS. You can, of course, uh, contribute code. As I mentioned, for better or worse, we are uh, now on GitHub and everything happens through GitHub, but you can also uh, join a community sprint. You can uh, contribute in many other ways than just code, uh, whether it's translations or documentation or anything else you, you can think of. And uh, of course, money and employee time donations are uh, important and that's really something what is uh, changing, uh, changing the code and changing how everything looks like and newly we have also uh, an open collective account and uh, there's a, all of the community sprint which was already mentioned so you can uh, see us there and that's uh, all from me thank you great thank you Vakla for the uh Great update on uh, on what's new and upcoming and the status of the Grass GIS project. So now I'm going to move over to the uh, to the questions. Um, there's a question here: Where will the new GUI be available for wind grass? Yes, yes, it will be. Uh, it's actually uh, based on the on the one which uh, you are already using, the one which is internally called uh, WX GUI. So, uh, so it will be there, yeah. Uh, in 8.2, it will be an opt-in preview. So you will have to go to a menu and enable it if you want to use it. Great, excellent. Um, there's, there's another question. Is there an updated roadmap? Users have reports breaking plugins and current stable release 7.8.5 right yeah so that uh, the next version 786 uh, uh, should fix that uh, that was caused by us uh, renaming all the branches in all the repositories and changing the uh, add-on repository structure uh, for grass eight, so that's uh, yeah. We are not really happy about it, but it should be uh, fixed with the next uh, patch release. Great, good to know. Um, I don't see any other questions in the questions tab. Uh, folks are, are encouraged to provide uh, provide some questions, and you know, Rakla can uh, can can address them. I have a couple of questions uh, from from my perspective, if uh, that's okay. Um, has there been any work, uh, or what the status is on the evolving on the new OGC API uh, family of specifications in Grass in terms of integrating the new specifications? Right. Uh, I'm probably not the best person to ask that question, so I will leave that without the answer. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no, it's all that's all good. Uh, let's see another question um, from the audience. What happens to add-ons coded for version seven point X? Do they need to be modified to be compatible with version eight? Yeah, that's a good question, and I think the general answer is no. Uh, what we will do is that we will just carry over all the add-ons from the Grass seven branch in add-ons repository to grass 8. Uh, so if you 
if you are a user or a developer of one of these add-ons, uh, after the after uh, after that happens, after that, which will be probably uh, after the release candidate is released for eight zero, um, uh, you should test it and uh, it should work. If it works with the development version of GraphGS now, it will work with eight two. Um, there are some changes which uh, are required, uh, which I know of, but uh, somebody is already working on it. So uh, I think we are in a good position there. Great. Um, quite another question for myself. Uh, what, are you, what, is this, what is the current situation with grass or, or plans, or if there's any information on um, how, how grass deals with search? And, and catalogs and dis and metadata and discovering discovering uh, data sets. Right. So usually the uh, the general approach in CrossGIS is to uh, use an OSG library if there is uh, uh, such library, and then the uh, specific things uh, uh, to resolve them in a in a module or a tool. So uh, for anything which is not purely analytical, uh, we prefer to have it uh, in a separate module or externalized to some library. Nice, excellent. So another great exa example of the extensibility um, of grass, so that's great. Going to look back into the audience for any uh, any I, final questions. I think I think I didn't actually completely answer the question about the roadmap. The seven eight six version we plan to release it uh, this fall, uh, and hopefully in in next couple of weeks or next next month or something like that. Although we don't have a set date. Great. I'm just looking out uh, into the audience for any final questions. Um, I think that's everything from now. Uh, any other final comments from you, uh, that cloud before we before we break? No, just uh, thank you for sharing, Tom. Thanks for everybody for listening. Awesome. That's great. So thank you, Vaclav, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, all of the speakers this morning. We saw a, uh, a good example of some of the uh, some exciting projects from uh, from OSGO. So again, thank you to all the speakers. Thank you for attending this session. This session, and uh, I wish you all a good uh, Phosphor G two thousand twenty one. Thank you. <laughs>